The study of the universe spans almost inconceivable extremes of size and distance and time. From the vast island of stars we call a galaxy, to the tiny atom and the particles that comprise it. From cosmic events that occurred billions of years in the past, to microcosmic events in the present that endure for only billions of a second. To explore the universe at these extremes, the scientist builds instruments that extend his reach and his vision. His great telescopic eye has the light gathering power of a million human eyes. It peers not only into the depths of space, but far back in time. Since the light it now observes may have left its source when dinosaurs inhabited the Earth. His telescopic ear is tuned to the invisible radio sky. It detects not objects, but the radio regions associated with them, and at distances far beyond the range of the largest optical telescope. But the radio waves and the visible light that pass through the Earth's atmosphere to these ground-based telescopes are only part of a broad spectrum of radiation, most of which is blocked by the atmosphere. So electronic instruments are lifted above this murky and turbulent layer. Airborne by rockets, by balloons, in unmanned astronomical observatories, in manned laboratories, and in spacecraft orbiting the planets. Instruments probe the near and distant environments of space and open new windows on the universe. imaginable concentration of elementary particles. In one gigantic detonation, the contents of this cosmic fireball were hurled outward in all directions. After a million years of expansion, the universe was an intense blaze of light. Then the radiation cooled. And after hundreds of millions of years, great clouds of hydrogen gas began contracting and, in time, evolved into the galaxies we now observe. Inside these galactic whirlpools, smaller fields of gravity condense hydrogen into stars. Stars are inconceivably hot. So hot, they sustain thermonuclear reactions that transform hydrogen into heavier elements. Sometimes their hydrogen fuel burns so fast, they flare out in violent explosions, hurling new elements across space. Like a great wind, the radiant energy of starlight drives these clouds of dust and gas throughout the galaxy. Out of these clouds evolve new generations of stars. More than half the stars in our galaxy travel in groups of two or more, orbiting around a common center of gravity. Like galactic comets, 
immense clusters of stars swing in and out of the galaxy in vast eccentric paths. Some small stars do not travel in the company of other stars. Our own sun is one of these. To the astronomer, the sun is a vast laboratory for the detailed study of a star's structure and energy. The vertical tower of the solar observatory supports a heliostat mirror which tracks the sun, gathers its rays, and reflects them down a light shaft that extends 300 feet below ground. At the end of the shaft, the rays are cast back to an observing room where minute by minute changes across the face of the sun are observed. Another mirror projects a light beam to a spectroscope, an instrument which splits the light into its component colors, a visible spectrum. The dark lines that cut across the spectrum band are produced by the radiation from the sun's interior shining through its atmosphere. Each line is the signature of a chemical element such as sodium, iron, calcium. It is this array of lines that forms the code which describes the properties and motion of a star. By narrowing the view of the sun to a single line of the spectrum, each level of the solar atmosphere can be photographed. And each reveals a remarkably different aspect. And with the addition of computer mapping and color processing that distinguishes levels of brightness, a detailed and multi-dimensional picture is obtained of a sun undergoing dramatic and turbulent change. The sun is a sphere of hot, seething gases and surges of radiation. Most of the light we get from the sun comes from the thin, bright layer which defines its visible edge, the photosphere. Above it, the chromosphere, a region of flaming outbursts of gas, extends through a transition zone to the thin outer atmosphere of the corona. Once thought to be a quiet layer of the solar atmosphere, the corona is now revealed to be a region of dramatic large-scale changes and unexpected turbulence, with temperatures reaching millions of degrees. Deep beneath the sun's atmospheric shell is the core, a violent nuclear furnace. Here, hydrogen is fused into helium, and in the process, some of the matter is converted into an enormous amount of energy. Radiating outward as a gas, it convects like a boiling liquid beneath the surface. The turbulent bubbling motion is visible in the granular cells of the photosphere. Sunspots, regions of intense magnetic fields appear on the surface, disappear in a few hours, or grow and persist for months in a mysterious 11-year cycle. The sun rotates once in 27 days. Because its equatorial regions rotate faster than the polar caps, the shearing action in the gas contorts the magnetic field into tangled structures which give rise to the sun's eruptive action. Shaped by these magnetic fields are the spectacular prominences, titanic streamers of gas reaching heights of more than a half a million miles above the surface. The greatest explosions in the solar system are flares, intense bursts of light erupting with the force of billions of hydrogen bombs. They move at hundreds of miles a second. Then, after minutes or hours, they fade away. The dark areas across the solar disk are coronal holes, which may provide new clues to the sun's interior, and may be a source of the solar wind, 
that blows outward to the farthest planets. On Earth, effects of these solar events are visible when auroras light up the dark Arctic sky and radio communication is disrupted. The sun is an average, middle-aged star. Yet it will generate heat and light for billions of years to come, as it has for five billion years past. It dominates the motions of all bodies in the solar system. Nearest the sun and obscured by its intense glare is Mercury, a cratered planet much like our moon. Temperatures rise to 800 degrees, but no clouds or atmosphere protect its ancient surface from the searing heat. Moving outward from Mercury, we encounter Venus. Its perpetual cloud cover traps the radiant energy of the sun within an atmosphere of incredible pressures From the surface, only a reddish glow reveals the presence of the sun. Beyond Venus, 93 million miles from the sun, is Earth. Its great oceans forming the clouds and air currents which warm and irrigate the planet, shape its continents and nourish life. Its satellite, the moon, airless, waterless, and scarred by meteors that have bombarded it since the time of its formation, now bears the imprints of our astronauts. A probe of the planet Mars has discovered a dynamic and evolving planet with unexpected geological features. A volcanic mountain, many times larger than the largest volcano on Earth. A vast and deep canyon, extending for 2,500 miles. And dry, river-like channels that may have been carved by running water. Beyond the orbit of Mars is the belt of asteroids, craggy chunks of rock and metal, some as small as boulders, others hundreds of miles in diameter. About 500 million miles from the sun, we encounter the first of the giant gas planets, Jupiter, the colossus of the solar system more massive than all the other planets combined. Deep beneath the maelstrom of clouds that band its surface is a primordial atmosphere much like that in which life awakened on Earth millions of years ago. And drifting on its surface is the mysterious red spot an immense cyclonic storm that has raged for hundreds of years and continues unabated. 